Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will describe and explain the steps of the scientific method process. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning target for today is, I can describe and explain the steps of the scientific method. All the information and facts we learned about the natural world had to come from somewhere. This information is displayed in scientific books all over the world. Question is, how did scientists obtain this knowledge? What steps or process did they go through to learn this information? Better yet, what steps or process would you go through to learn information about the natural world? All scientists and even you would use this common method which is known as the scientific method. So what is the scientific method? The scientific method is a process used to investigate the unknown. It is the general process of a scientific investigation. This process uses evidence and testing. Scientists use the scientific method so they can find information. A common method allows all scientists to answer questions in a similar way. Scientists who use this method can reproduce another scientist's experiments. Almost all versions of the scientific method include the following steps, although some scientists do use slight variations. Number one, make observations. Number two, identify a question you would like to answer based on the observation. Number three, form a hypothesis or a testable explanation. Number four, make a prediction based on the hypothesis. Number five, test a hypothesis. Number six, analyze your results and draw conclusions. And number seven, communicate your results. Let's go through the steps on the scientific method starting off with making observations. Step one, making observations. Imagine that you are a scientist. Well, since you're in this awesome class, you are definitely a scientist. Let's suppose that you have two pieces of bread that you want to toast. You put them into the toaster and press the button, but your bread does not toast. These are your observations or things you notice about an environment or objects using your five senses of touch, taste, hear, smell, and see. Step two, identify a question based on your observations. The next step is to ask a question about the bread and toaster. A simple question can be, why didn't my bread get toasted? Step three, construct a hypothesis or a testable explanation. A hypothesis is a potential answer to the question, one that can somehow be tested. For example, our hypothesis in this case could be that the toast didn't toast because the electrical outlet is broken. This hypothesis is not necessarily the right explanation. Instead, it's a possible explanation that we can test to see if it is likely correct or if we need to make a new hypothesis. Every hypothesis needs to be written in a way that it can do the following. Number one, be tested using experiments to collect evidence. Two, be proven wrong. Three, provide measurable results. And four, provide yes or no answers. Step four, make predictions. A prediction is an outcome we'd expect to see if the hypothesis is correct. In this case, we might predict that if the electric outlet is broken, then plugging the toaster into a different outlet should fix the problem. Step 5. Test the predictions. To test the hypothesis, we need to make an observation or perform an experiment associated with the prediction. For instance, in this case, we will plug the toaster into a different outlet and see if it toasts. If the toaster does toast, then the hypothesis is supported and most likely correct. If the toaster does not toast, then the hypothesis is not supported and is most likely wrong. The results of a test may either support or contradict the hypothesis. Results that support a hypothesis can't conclusively or finally prove that it's correct, but they do mean it's likely to be correct. On the other hand, if results contradict or go against a hypothesis, that hypothesis is probably not correct. Unless there was a flaw in the test, a possibility we should always consider, a contradictory result means that we can discard the hypothesis and look for a new one. This is why scientists run their experiments many times to make sure that their results are as close as possible to being correct. The more tests that they run, the more likely their results will be correct. Step 6. Analyze your results through the data you have collected and draw conclusions. The last step of the scientific method is to reflect on our results and use them to guide our next steps. If the hypothesis was supported, we might do additional tests to confirm it or revise it to be more specific. For instance, we might investigate why the outlet is broken. If the hypothesis was not supported, we would come up with a new hypothesis. 
For instance, the next hypothesis might be that there's a broken wire in the toaster. In most cases, the scientific method is an iterative process, which means it is repeated over and over again to test and make sure a hypothesis is accurate. In other words, it's a cycle rather than a straight line. The result of one go round becomes feedback that improves the next round of question asking. Once again, the more tests that are run, the more questions can be asked and the more accurate the results. Quick checks for understanding. Number one, why do you think the bread won't toast? Number two, what question would you ask based upon your observation of seeing the bread not toast? Number three, what hypothesis would you propose? Number four, what prediction would you make? Number five, how would you test this prediction? And number six, what do you think your results would be? Pause the video and take five or six minutes to write down your responses. You got this. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with describing and explaining the steps of the scientific process by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep, keep going, going because it's not a run until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan the QR code to contact us and explore more about awesome content and material. Peace and have a positive, productive day.